Hey friends, welcome back. So today I have to build a bunch of mic cables. So I thought to myself, you know, we might as well make a video about building mic cables out of Star Quad. So in case you missed it, uh, check out the link in the above corner uh, for the difference between installed and touring grade Star Quad cable. Um, so today we're gonna build a mic cable out of the touring star quad cable um, we are going to be using two different types of neutric connectors these are both gold plated connectors because in the days post radio shack everything that is a gold connector is better right um, so we are using the NC3FXX and the NC3MXX, and they are both B, meaning that it is a black connector, which is uh, I like for style points. Certainly nothing against the uh, nickel connectors, but I think these are cool. Um, so anyway, uh, these are just connectors that I keep in stock uh, pretty much all the time just for, for building cables and stuff. So uh, without a further ado, let's get started. So I have the cable stripped. This is the, uh, the the canar or canary, however you say it, L4E6S star quad cable. Um, and if you if you check out the link, as I mentioned in the beginning, it'll show you how to strip this back. Um, so once you're at this point, what I like to do is just get the connectors kind of flayed out like this, and you want to get a thin gauge set of wire strippers so um i am a huge fan of klein tools all of my tools i try to buy klein whenever possible um so you, you have to be careful you have to get a, a make sure that your wire strippers are uh, small enough to handle this this particular gauge of cable um which hang on, i have to look at this close I should have done this pre it is a 24 gauge cable so uh, doing this on camera when you strip this we're gonna line this up in the 24 gauge side you do want to strip off about a half of an inch or so uh, somewhere you know maybe say 3 eighths of cable that looks that looks just like that because the idea with star quad cable is that these are twisted pairs so you want to keep the cables twisted as much as you can when you get into the uh, into the connector so I'm just gonna strip this out Okay, so once you have your connectors stripped like this, what I like to do is just find the like pairs. So pick a color. So let's just start with white. And I like to pinch the connector just like this and twist opposing. So as you do that, you're twisting the copper part together. So depending on the cables, that's like an okay twist. Let's see if we can get it better on the blue side. So sometimes you kind of have to do a little loop depending on the depending on the cable, but you just want to make sure that the copper is twisted together. You don't really want to get any of this jacketing in there. So that's good. We'll just clean this up a little bit. And then what I like to do is just grab some flux and I just dip the connectors in the flux just like this, or the leads rather. If you're using rosin core solder, that doesn't really matter, um, but just for safety's sake, you might as well do that. Um, so as far as soldering goes, what I also like to do is just, you want to make sure that the tip of your, your soldering iron is clean. So I just stuck this in the flux a little bit, and I have a little uh, brass solder cleaner just like that so you know you always want to make sure if you look at the tip of my soldering iron how nice and silver that is um, you just want to make sure that the tip of your soldering iron is always clean so when you go in here to solder you want the solder to flow into the into the wire which is the point of the flux so I'll stop talking and solder so you can see this And then this is really going to be apparent on this ground line right here. Okay. So now that this is cleaned up like this, you can see that we've got long leads right here. So all you have to do, um, and in my previous video, I did call out these, these uh, Klein um, strippers like this. These are really good. I think these are like 10 or 13 bucks, somewhere around there at Home Depot. Um, I just buy these every couple of months or so um, just to keep them sharp. So when you cut them, just cut the lead down just like that so it's nice and tiny. And then on this end, on the ground line, you can take it. And what I like to do is just cut the end off so that it's blunt. 
um, and that just kind of gets so if you look if you look down in here just like this there, there's a little bit of fuzzy wire that's there so I'll show you how we deal with that right at the end so uh, we'll, we'll set these in our helping hands and just set this off to the side uh, so let's do the male end of the connector first So in these bags, you get the back boot, this portion, the actual leads. We'll call this the uh, the other side of the nut because it's kind of like a double nut thing. And then you get your little compression fitting on the back. Um, so what I should have done is put this on first. But since the other end of the cable isn't made yet, I'm going to do it from the back end. So stand by. So... Again, what I should have showed you is put this part on first. That's a good habit to get into because if you solder the uh, the leads onto the other end of the video uh, after, you're you're gonna have a bad time. So, um, this is the next part that goes on. You don't necessarily have to put it on first with cable that's this thin because it does have a little cut in there, and you can just put it on the cable. But um, you know, you should get into the habit of doing that. I'm not gonna do it just so you can see it clearly on the camera. So again, I'm just gonna put this in my helping hands, and we're just gonna push that out of the way for a second. And now we are going to uh, build the uh, connector part. Okay, so here's the thing. When, when you build these cables, it's important to keep the like gender together. So if you have to build 10 mic cables, it's good to do the male end all at once and the female end all at once, and here's why. So on the male end, this is pin one, this is pin three, this is pin two. On the female end, pin three stays the same, but pins um, one and pin two get reversed. So the pinning on this is pin one is ground, pin three is cold, and pin two is hot. So if you're doing this and you're doing opposing ends and you just get into the habit and you're not paying attention because it's kind of a boring thing to make cables, um, you can reverse your ground and your, uh, your hot wire, which is not good. So because we're using rosin core solder, um, you don't really have to uh, put flux in these cups. But if you're using the silver connector, sometimes it's hard to, uh, to get these to stick. So here's how we do this. Oh, I should also say, oops, sorry, let's drop my solder. Um, these connectors, if you look at the side of the cup like this, you see how they have this little flange right here? It just sort of dips down. That is so that you can put your soldering iron perpendicular to the cup and get it in there. So just, just something to keep in mind here when you're building these connectors. Oh, and I should also tell you, right now I'm using a Weller soldering iron and it is 600 degrees. So if you're if the first time you're doing this, uh, just some settings here to uh, keep in mind. So I am just going to fill these cups with solder and stop yakking at you. Okay, so now that this is tinned, what I like to do is just verify one more time my pin placement. So we are going one, three, two. And even if you do this a million times, you should still verify where your pins are at because you will screw it up because, again, it's kind of a boring job and you zone out. So for Star Quad, there really isn't a standard as to what colors are. At least I'm not aware of it. So pick a color and stick with it. If you want your hot to be blue or white, just, just stick with that. So on your first solder here, let's start with our hot line. So we're just going to heat up the solder in the cup and stick this in just like that. And just hold it there for a second. So on our cold, uh, this is where a good set of tweezers is going to come in handy. So I'm just going to set those there, and I'm going to see if I can do this um, without it. So what you can do is just bend this just a little bit. Okay, so that is uh, our cold, or excuse me, our hot and our cold. So what you want to do is just grab this from... You're just going to grab this from the bottom, just like this, and just melt this down. And there we go. So potential for noise can come into play if you have any of these tiny little strands of wire bridging connections here. So solder, if, if you see solder bridging any of these connections, um, that, that, can, that can have crosstalk, that can have a bunch of noise implications. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So if you want, you can put some solder on this on this braided portion right here. I don't think I really need to. There aren't any things uh, sticking out. But again, it is something worthwhile to look at this and say, is there um, is there anything touching these connectors? So once you have this ready, 
we'll just grab our little boot and slide this up. And if you notice on the MXX connector, there are little channels on the side that we're just going to put in there like that. And while you're building this, if the uh, pin three is on the bottom, the Neutrik logo is on top. So we'll just stick that on there in there like that. And this is always a little bit tricky, so I'm going to stop yakking. So that goes on there like that. And then what I like to do is just bring this up, screw that on. And there you go. There's the male side of the cable. So I am not going to talk and show you how to do the female side. All right, everybody, so this is finished up. So here is our finished StarQuad XLR cable with a Neutrik connector. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Um, I, I'm sure if you follow me, you know I love making videos like this. If anybody has a question on any specific connector, I have a giant cart of Neutrik connectors. I'm happy to build any cable on camera for you. Um, if you are interested in buying these particular cables, you can buy them from me directly. So you can just check the uh, link below for that. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. I um, hope everybody has a great day. Thanks for stopping by.